You're, You're with, with the, the Breaker Leggers, and we are backstage at the National Theatre. Before heading into the Littleton space to see the play Network. So stay tuned to find out how many legs. Whether it's break a leg or, or leg it. <laughs> Before you lovely people go any further, to make sure you've always got your finger on the theatrical polls, for theatre news, reviews and interviews, just pop down, hit subscribe now. Hit subscribe now. So we're here back at the National Theatre, we're here quite often actually, uh, this time to see Network. Yes, Network, it is a new adaptation of the 1976 movie of the same name, which I've never seen. Have you seen no, it? I haven't. It's won four um, Academy Awards. Yeah, so I think it's considered to be iconic, but other than that, I know relatively little about it other than it's about TV news. Um, it's been directed by Ivo van Hove. Ivo, Ivo, we, Ivo. Ivo, we've Hove, heard him Hove. pronounced so many different ways. Yes. And this is quite typical of him to kind of adapt a piece. Um, he did yes. it with Obsession as well, I think? Yes, which is an um, Italian movie which he directed over at the Barbican, mm -hmm. which we tried to watch. But struggled a little. However, yeah. we have liked his other stuff. Um, Hedda Gabler here. Hedda yes. Gabler, Gabler. Another one. Um, and well. also Lazarus, the David Bowie musical, directed that. And the Olivier Award winning A View from the Bridge. Yes. Um, now, this has been adapted by Lee Hall. Yes, Lee Hall was the writer of Billy Elliot, both for stage and screen. He also um, wrote Pitmen Painters. He adapted another movie, Shakespeare in Love, uh, for the stage. We saw that, and that was, was great. really good. Didn't seem to run for very long, no, but it was, it was very shame. good. Uh, he also recently um, was Our Ladies of Perpetual Sucker. Yes, and we got to review that, so do check out our review just up there. Um, Cast-wise, then? Yeah, big, big name playing the lead in this, Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston, you will probably, most people will know him as playing um, Heisenberg, that was kind of his villainous name, in Breaking Bad. Yes, but um, he which is massive. has other credits, he was in mm. Malcolm in the Middle. Playing dad i think it's hal i think yes. hal was his name and also he has stage credits um, fairly recently his portrayal of lyndon b johnson in the play all the way which he won a tony award tony for. award on broadway and that was also adapted into a um, tv film yeah it was which well. I, i'd love to catch it not mm. seen it yet but i certainly i'm going to try i don't think he's come over here to the uk since his big successes, so um, it's a bit of a special one. Yep. Um, the piece is two hours straight through, so we won't be catching you in the interval, but we're sure to catch up with you and let me know what we thought at the end. We've come to the end of Network, two hours worth here at the Littleton Space at the National Theatre, so what did you make of that? It's a unparalleled mixed media storytelling smash. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was engaged throughout and in terms of the technical achievement in this show, I think it's probably the most impressive I've ever seen. What about you? Well, I have to agree full-heartedly. In terms of a theatrical experience, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, we were so close to everything that's going on. We were in the fourth row, plus they have a little mini thrust coming out into uh, the second row. Brian Cranston at one point, we could have reached over and touched him. Yes. So we're right on top of the action. Now, I've often said this in terms of the directorial top directorialship of Ivo Van Hove, that he kind of takes the rule book of everything that should be theatre and almost knows it, either he knows it so well so he can just break the rules or he just doesn't care so his mind is free to create and to bring in so many creative elements. He can go from a stripped back version of Hedda Gabler, which we had at the start of the year, to this entirely mixed medium performance with like music cameras the lot yeah I, I was thinking when I was there it literally is the it's the very personification of a genius mind but with genius comes a lot of risk and I think he's not frightened to take risk we've seen a couple of instances where for me the uh, the, the the chances he's taken have not paid off 
but in this one every single risk he has taken has come through with a fantastic reward for the audience. And it's so current as well. I mean, it's, it's, even though it's period. Well, I, that's what one thing actually. I wasn't sure where it was set because it, it does kind of dance between now and the technology and the mediums within the piece of now, but also being set in the is it late seventies? Yes, this piece was set, but. You kind of, because this is such a free piece and a theatrical experience, you can kind of let that go. Yeah. So I was a bit worried. I wasn't too sure in terms of the setting, but it's still so relevant. And the I relevant think, links it makes at the end are so relevant. And I think that's the point. In the text, it basically um, tells us that the media control us, that actually we are... Um, led by the trends and led by the ideas and led by the news that we are shown which is often not the full story we are given a very sanitized or a very swayed version of events and that's what we are led to believe is the truth now I don't think that it matters that the setting isn't clear because nothing has changed since the mm. since since news became mainstream in a media setting in the 70s kind and of really TV, hit, isn't it? yeah and TV and really hit TV. its kind of peak between then and now nothing's changed nothing's changed in that respect yeah it, it is as relevant then as it is now especially with the whole Trump period the whole fake news the kind, kind of scandal one small little fire can turn into a wildfire in terms of stories we kind of got going it's, on with Weinstein yeah Spacey, it's a the lot dangerous spread dangerous control and power that the media has and has always had since the birth of the TV so the themes are very relevant and the way it's told is magical like they actually break out of the theatre yeah I mean the audience the they actors film the, they film outside live stream on the South Bank on the South Bank into the theatre and we follow their journey walking from the South Bank all the way into the theatre onto the stage and I've never Which seen that done before yeah and then also like having the um, actors come out into the audience having the audience fill a quarter of the stage kind of eating their dinner yeah there is there is a there was a ball at the National Theatre ran in order for you to be able to purchase a dining experience Ivo van Hove has conceptualized this restaurant called um, food work and as a result you can have a five course meal and wine on stage in amongst the action now to be honest with you they're probably not the best seats in that house but in terms of an experience what a great experience and that's again just something that this guy I mean it, they clearly the powers that be the producers that are backing this show and the artistic at the national he's probably walking into their meetings with all these crazy ideas and they're just going yes Evo because they'll know he'll make it work but in anyone else's hand I would be terrified of those things and the thing is it did work there were scenes that were set in kind of the restaurant settings which seamlessly fluidly work um, they went over to them um, I was worried that it might be distracting but I hardly noticed it at all they were so subtly done yes just in terms of a whole encapsulating draw, drawing you in experience even for the people sitting on the other side of the brass I still felt right there in amongst the action so let's move on to cast. I guess shall we start with the number one guy, headliner act? Yeah. Let's talk about Brian Cranston. Now I know Brian Cranston from Breaking Bad, you don't, so no. I'm eager to know what you made of him. I lament a lot that actors aren't being, they are acting. If you want a masterclass in how to exhibit a character, literally channel a character from page to an acting, um, in, you know, a portrayal embodiment, embodiment. Yeah. that is Brian Cranston I go so far as to say he's that's probably one of the strongest performances I've ever seen on stage I thought I mean I loved him anyway in Breaking Bad such a Breaking Bad although it lost its way controversial may, I may say he was still fantastic and seeing him on stage he's just so natural yeah. embodied the, the passion the power um, the journey he goes on the, it's fantastic. The problem is with the TV actor is, you know, you might be a 10 take Charlie. Every single line you deliver might need multiple takes and a huge amount of time. You don't get that, you know, buffer, that safety net here on the stage. And to be honest with you, Brian Cranston doesn't need it. And what was magical was there were times when he was delivering a close up, which is about 10, a camera 10 inches from his face, and yet he was performing to a complete auditorium. So to get the balance to have the 
um, stillness of yeah. delivering to a camera that's a in TV your face while still giving a physical like six performance. Six people. I, I, not, I, was, I was a bit amazed at yeah, one point how it, that was being carried off. It's off. kind of awe striking. It really is. Oh, striking. Yeah. Also, I've got to say, Michelle Dockery as Diana Christensen, the main lead in this, the TV exec, the one that's most interested in ratings and content. Wow. I mean, I wasn't sure at first, but by the end of it, and I was keeping an eye on her at times in the show where she wasn't focused on, and her reactions were on point. She never dropped character. It was, it was so impressive. Yeah, and it's kind of a very very male-dominated show, and she is kind of the key female, so um, she did stand out, and she was very strong as a figure. Yes, absolutely. In this male-dominated environment that she inhabited. I really enjoyed um, Tunji Kasim as Frank Hackett. Um, he was uh, really a very strong character, delivered Boldly, I would say he's a very bold actor. Uh, Joy touches from here. Yeah, kind of like the lead of us, the lead CEO, what CEO of this kind of big corporate world, this corporate giant. Yeah, he was very good at that. And also Douglas Henshaw as Max Schumacher. I loved him. I think his part probably had I the most him. depth. I would say that Jeez, role. Yeah, he's, he's kind of like also a main character in mm -hmm. a way. Um, it's almost like a, a joint role. Um, he's following his character. Spoiler alert through kind of his affair and his relationships and the morality that he feels and his obligation to his wife. Um, it's fantastic. Yes, I know you were a big fan of Richard Corduroy as um, Arthur Jensen. Yeah, now he had a very small part. I think he maybe had two scenes quite close to the end. Big monologues. But Yeah, big monologues and delivered with such poise. I, I again, inhabiting the character, I believed him. His accent was on point. I was hanging on every word he said. Uh, a fantastic supporting almost semi cameo role with having so much technology in a show like this and so much achievement in that sense it can be at times a, a, a concern that that's going to be the star of the show that that's going to take precedent over the acting choices that these real people are making on stage i felt there was a great balance in this i did i felt the technology really held the piece up but it didn't um, overshadow those sorts of the script and the and the actors themselves yeah it was very much part of it you could imagine the kind of busy network going live in one minute yeah. the kind of the rush I and the felt floor. anxiety at that point yeah so kind I... of like oh they're not in the position they've got to get their makeup done oh they've yeah. got to get their mics on okay cameras into position yeah. everybody in the studio ready Frenzy. kind of counting down it's, it really did um Add, I added to it, that's the thing. I, I've often heard it said that too much technology can distract from a text, but I don't think this did, And although that would have been a concern, I imagine, at times. Mm -hmm. I've seen other Evos where uh, it's too many ideas. I'm obsession to start, I mean, it was a poor script and it wasn't done any favours by the technology they employed in that show um, but in this show certainly uh, you know I would say deserves Tal Yarden for video design deserves an absolute massive shout out he has fantastic he's done a brilliant job he also yeah. did video for Hamlet Lazarus we've seen him before Evo loves him works with him a lot and I know why he's the best in the game um, and also, as is usual with National Theatre, uh, live musicians, but very different. It was almost like synthesised Electronic, music. Really, Electronic, wasn't it? yeah. They had, um, I think, drum pads and also like um, voice altering, um, where they were singing into microphones and it was altering it to make some funky, cool, modern sounds. It was it's very different in terms of a musical selection to anything I've seen before. But there was a lot of underscoring and we think music so important to a piece because of how you can link music to emotion and that was employed so well by just four electronica artists in this. Well, I don't think I think we've kind of covered most of the main points. Yeah. So I guess you are wondering how many legs we are going to give this piece. So for network at the National Theatre Littleton space, we are going to give five five legs an absolute. Full house, thoroughly deserved. Runaway smash hit. I think the critics are going to lap this up. We certainly did. Now, it's playing until March, so uh, loads of time to see. Sold out. 
Yeah, and yeah. I, if it wasn't sold out, I would imagine um, we've caught it on the last preview. Mm -hmm. Come its next showing, which is press night, once those reviews are out, I would imagine any spare ticket would be gold. Try not to despair, because the National Theatre do something fantastic. At noon on a Friday, they do the Friday Rush, where you can purchase fantastic seats for just £20, but you need to be on that website clicking that button. We will link it below the Friday Rush page right on the release of those tickets. If you're not, you're going to miss out, and believe me, it's going to be worth trying to grab something for this show. A theatrical experience not to be missed. That's what we th think. Yeah, please, if you get a chance to see it, tell us what you think. Yeah, and make sure you hit subscribe or maybe follow us on Twitter. We're the Breaker Leggers. And, and we'll catch, catch you again, again soon. soon. Bye. Bye. Hello. 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 Hello.